uh, before we start Rockrail, the first thing to do is to create a directory to hold the new module and it would be in Rockrail which is usually on C in Rockrail that would be usually be in C under Rockrail is usually straight under the C directory as shown here and here we can now <coughs> create a new directory uh, for the modules like these modules uh, here so we'll add new folder and this folder this is a new module for John JBS06 is the module official designation so we've created that now that we have that we can now open rock view open rock rail the actual program and then we need to go into modifying the path for rock rail which is um, here C rock rail rock rail and then point it to the directory we've just made JBS06 so that's what we need to select and that will open up the rock rail program and allow us to continue editing because it now knows where to store the, the plan file okay the next uh, step is to have some property changes rock rail properties we need to change the uh, default database plan which is an XML file as shown here and change it to one we need which is in located in JBS06 and we change the name to JBS06 and we open that and now oh, this should show JBS06, JBS06, JBS06 and here we now have the full path name to our database C Rockrail JBS06, JBS06 XML is where it will all be uh, uh, stored so now we've got all the path names, the track plan file block occupancy locomotive database all stored in JBS06 and that completes setting up the path name for the module directory we want to. The last thing we need to do, extremely important, is we need to change this into a module module plan. Then we can save this and we're ready to continue. Work so now we have a blank plan and we can actually go and make the plan. Now from John I received a, a schematic of for what, the, what the module looks like it's a, a, a corner module but basically straight through so we go up here to track plan and say edit the panel and now we have the uh, various options for types of track that we want, may want to use we've got now in, in place now we select what we need and first the top level is the track going toward the left so the last item on that track would be an arrow going toward the left that would be this uh, then 
usually we would have a signal or a sign as exit of the block. We'll give it an ID, JBS001 for the time being. And it's a two aspect signal. I don't believe John has got a, a signal there, but in the future he can, and in, in the meantime it can be operated virtually so that uh, the panel operator can see whether the train would stop or not based on the signal. Now normally here we would have a sensor, an, an, an in, uh, so-called in sensor, <coughs> but uh, John has only got one sensor at so for the time being we'll use as a blank track here and then we'll have the block itself and the block idea is uh, JBS 01A I believe you can always change the ID later and you notice there is a convention for the direction of travel inside a normal direction of travel in a block and that is that the plus this little plus here should be from the direction where the locomotive is coming from. So we'll orient this toward the east and now we see the little plus sign here is where the locomotive is coming from. It's a one directional operation going this way. Now John has a, does have a, obviously a, a, at least one sensor so we'll put that sensor here Call that JBS 06 S01 for SENS01. We can always change these names later. It'll uh, it'll have an address later. It, it'll be hard, it'll be wired in, so that uh, the system can see whether a, tr a train has entered the block. Um, you know, we will simulate the second sensor which would normally be here just in front of the sign uh, by having a so-called enter and in, enter to in sensor here and the in will be generated by the system a few seconds after the this sensor has been activated. Okay finally we'll add a piece of track showing the direction again and that will be the completion of this block any other block will be, other modules will be. There we go. Now on the inward side again, he has a single sensor. Place that on the inward side of the block. JBS06 SO2 sensor 2. Uh, then we've got. And that's going the other way now. So we'll just change the orientation east so it's all going in the right direction. And then we'll add a final track element here with a direction on it. Change the orientation again to the east. And so now that's that's the complete block. Now we are JBS06, we've now got the complete block. Alright, what I uh, failed to mention was that it's a corner, uh, a corner block, it's turning a corner. So we could change this so that it, uh, and we'll add a so-called corner piece, and this will now allow us to turn the corner here. Now put this in a direction south, sorry, north. So that is what the, the block uh, <clears throat> looks like if it's a uh, a corner corner block. And I'll have to check with John exactly uh, whether this is a closer representation uh, for this module or the straight through. So we now save this again, save, and we're all done. Fin finally, uh, we can add the module to any track plan that's being made for a particular set up as is shown here as an example and because this is a modular plan we can now 
say add a module and in this case it'll be the module we just created the JBS 06 module shown in shown in the directory here JBS 06 XML we'll give it an ID JBS 06 obviously and there's our module now ready to be added to any track plan that's being made for a particular um, exhibition or this module could that would be the easiest thing to do is replace the corner module that was made that was used here so that this module could come out and John's module now can go in and go in there and the other modules can then be hooked up to create the track plan that's going to be used for that particular setup. Well that's a separate discussion on uh, creating a track plan and what needs to be done for that. For the time being this is just showing how the newly created JBS 06 is added to, to a uh, to a, to a track plan.